For those of you that have been watching my feed over the last few days, maybe even a week, I do apologize for having to remove my T61P repair video, but the comments were just getting ridiculous. It amazes me the number of people, and that is to say 99% of the comments, who don't like older computers. And by the way, this isn't all that old. This isn't technically obsolete. Because it can run Windows 7. It doesn't have all the drivers for Windows 7, but it can run Windows 7. But everybody is saying that this is an obsolete piece of junk, and that I should replace it with something that is newer and better. First of all, not everything that is newer is better than this. In fact, most of it is built cheaper, and falls apart within a couple of weeks. Maybe months. This is just, I'm just saying this from experience. I support well over a thousand computers that belong to a thousand people. A little bit more than that, but I'm just rounding it here. I have to say that a good 90% of their computer computers are older than this. Mostly Windows XP. A Mostly Windows XP in 2000, a few Vista, three Windows 7 machines, the rest are 98 and stuff in between there. But this is some old equipment that I support. Just like this. And for you to tell me that I'm wasting my time repairing this older stuff, that's insulting. That's insulting to me, and that's insulting to a thousand other people. Give or take a few. I get that it's your opinion. All right, it can, you cannot like old computers for all I care. I don't care. You don't have to. I never said you did. Achoo. Sorry. But for you to try and sway my opinion to newer equipment, that's also insulting. I don't like newer equipment. It's not that I hate it, but it's just not as useful to me. I mean, why buy something new when you can find something old for free, right? So anyway, after I started getting a whole slew of those comments, I started moderating and it's like, I can't do this. I disabled the comments. People still didn't get the message because then my other videos were getting flooded with these kinds of comments. And it's like, oh, you've got to be kidding. So finally, I just removed the entire video. So yeah, I'm sorry, and I do appreciate all the people who did post meaningful comments to me. So thank you. That is also very much appreciated. But I would also appreciate it if you stop with all of the not-so-necessary opinion-swaying comments. Because you cannot sway my opinion. Or at least it's not easy. That being said, I figure I'd talk about this machine again. As you can see, it's still missing the uh, K key. In fact, the last person I gave it to removed the uh, little button that's right here. So now it's just the uh, touch membrane. The key still works. Just not as well as you think it is. I'm going to replace the keyboard. And I will do a video when I do replace the keyboard, so don't worry. Uh, it's the 15-inch uh, T61P system. Meaning that's a little bit different than your standard T61. It has a 2.4 GHz Intel Centrino Pro, which is actually a Core 2 Duo. It's a T7700. You have your 1394 FireWire. I believe that's FireWire 400. It might be 800. I think it's, but I think it's too old for 800. The uh, wireless radio switch. For some reason, I can't get the Bluetooth wireless radio to work in Windows Vista. But whatever. We have an SD card slot. I wish I had an SD card slot on my machine, but I don't. So, um... 
And in fact, I have that, so I can um, use the SD card slot on that. I did replace the hard drive with 320 gigabyte SD gate. The original is sitting right there in this mess that I'm going to have to clean up. It is a one gig 100 gigabyte Hitachi Travel Star. It has an OptiArc uh, DVD ROM, DVD RW, CD RW, two USB ports, a uh, Kensington lock. This is actually a hot swap day for those of you that wonder. IBM has these on all of their computers. More well, I suppose if you want to be picky, you can call them Lenovo now. It doesn't matter. The battery looks like this. It is not interchangeable with the uh, T60 ones. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> The uh, DC input, which by it's a 20 volt input. And you actually have a nice little wiring diagram there. You have the, uh, I believe that's the intake for the cooling fan. I'm being careful here. Because these Seagate drives are very gen very fragile, so. Which is why I don't like Seagate as much. But it's, it's what I could afford and what I could buy. And what I had lying around. <laughs> That's the exhaust. We have a VGA port, which actually is an XGA based on specifications. Uh, we have a um, telephone modem, a uh, Ethernet, headphone, in headphone, a microphone, another USB port, and I believe that is a PCMCIA slot. Just one. It is running Vista. Much to the dismay of so many of my viewers. But I'm sorry, but I couldn't get XP to install on this. Because I tried multiple times. I tried changing the uh, serial ATA controller mode to compatibility. That didn't work. So I'm thinking that there's something wrong with my installation. Yeah, excuse me. Installation medium. Um, I like this design. It's actually really cool. You can see the, uh, the ribbon right there. There are your LED lights, your front panel LED lights. You have wireless, Bluetooth, keyboard lock, hard drive activity, power, battery, a uh, D DC input indicator, and a sleep indicator. You have the uh, standard ThinkVantage button that comes with just about every IBM ThinkPad and Lenovo ThinkPad you can find. The uh, AccuPoint is actually has an adapter on it because the... Um, you can see that is a lot di more different than uh, this. It's much smaller. So they have an adapter that goes into there that converts it from this line size to that size. Yeah, this one's actually kind of broken. You can see. The camera will focus on it. Uh, the machine is fully functional, and other than that K key, it looks pretty much all original. It's missing the, uh, Windows sticker there. I don't know where that went. But, uh, I'm already up at 8 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, power this on. Go into setup here. This is how the IBMs work. I can tell you that you probably can't see that because my display is so dim. I wonder if I could put it up. I don't know why my display is so dim. It's not like this normally. You can see config, date and time, security, startups, restart, and uh, HED diagnostics. Security, basically you have passwords. You have I do have the um, fingerprint sensor on this machine. There's a security chip. I don't know what that does. There's a BIOS update. Data execution prevention, so I can disable it from inside the BIOS. I would rather have that enabled because, um, potential virus problems. We have IO port access. 
This allows us to con configure the uh, network boot and the original, the normal boot options. This is the boot menu, boot priority order. We can change the date and time, and we can take a look at the configuration. So you can see we have AHCI, which is the Advanced Hard Drive Controller and Advanced Host Controller Interface is what AHCI is. Core multiprocessing, we have Intel virtualization. So uh, we're going to exit out of that and the system is going to reboot. I do not have the extended memory test running on this. Um, I'm not sick, I, I assure you. Here comes Vista. You can barely see that. took off my um, tripod attachment because it's kind of digging into my hand. Now you'll notice I can't get the Bluetooth to work. It's really slow boot up time, but um, it's normal. Should automatically start up. That's a lot better. So we will install all these updates that this machine has. So it has four gigabytes of memory. You'll notice they had T7700 running at 2.4 gigahertz. Windows Defender is complaining. But you can see all of the uh, different programs that we have installed. I just have the default background on. This machine is set up with a one use with one user account. The one thing I don't like about Vista. You can see I actually have a viewer installed on here because I'm trying it out. Install updates automatically. You can hear the cooling fan ramp up. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some Windows updates here. I think I have it doing automatic, so. And you know, I've had some people say that I sound like uh, Tom DeLonge. I hope that's actually a compliment and not an insult. <laughs> But go ahead and look him up and see see for yourself. I personally don't know because I haven't actually watched any videos or anything. I haven't heard him speak before, so. Now updating Firefox. I can assure you that this video is going to be boring. This is Vista Ultimate, by the way. Which, as you can see, is running quite well. 
Yeah, there are a few drivers that I have installed that I don't have installed on my machine. Because when I rebuilt mine, a lot of these drivers didn't exist. At least not for Windows Vista. So I think that's going to do it for uh, this video. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. I uh, hope to see you next time. Till then.